Hello guys, this is Coach P with MasterChess.com and in this video we're going to take a look at positions where the king and bishop are trying to draw against a king and two separated pawns or disconnected pawns. There are four main types of positions that deal with king and bishop versus two separated pawns that we need to know, which we're going to cover in this video. So here's our first position. The king and the bishop work together. If the king is able to get inside the square of one of the pawns and the bishop covers the diagonal of the other pawn, then he's going to be able to achieve a simple draw. From here, white doesn't have many options. He can try to move the pawn to g6 so he could uh, win the bishop. After the bishop sacrifices and king takes the bishop, the black king can simply come to c6, attacking the other pawn, and he's going to be able to win it on the next move. And coming back, the other try that he has is trying to rush the other pawn right away from which black will simply come next to it and then be able to take it on the next move. And now the bishop just has to stay on this diagonal. As soon as the pawn moves to g6, the bishop will take that and that's a draw as well. In this next position, the white king cannot get inside the square of any of the pawns, but he is still able to draw. The drawing move here is bishop to g5. What this does, it covers the diagonal of both of the pawns. So now the pawn on f5 is stopped because if he moves, the bishop will just take it. And even if the other pawn marches, the bishop from g5 covers the diagonal of both of those pawns. So if any of those pawns moves to a dark square, the bishop will just take it. So from here, black has two main ways to try to win here, but it's not going to work. One way will be moving the king to g6, attacking the bishop from which the bishop could simply move to d2, also keeping an eye on the square f4 and c3, not letting those pawns march. Um, you could see the king cannot step next to the pawn to help it uh, uh, move because the bishop covers the diagonal. So here the black king has to move to h5, and now white will bring his king closer to the action. Let's say king to g4, king to e5. And now white will be able to pair up with the bishop to fight against the pawns. If black here pushes the pawn to f4, the bishop will simply take it and black cannot take back. Uh, the other pawn marching to c3, you could see the bishop already covers that diagonal. He just has to stay on this diagonal and uh, win the other pawn when he reaches the dark square. And the other try that black has is moving the pawn to c3, attacking the bishop. Well, after the bishop takes the pawn and pawn marches to f4, there's still a dark square that pawn has to go through. So after bishop to d4, the bishop just has to stay on that diagonal, and as soon as the pawn marches to f2, the bishop will take it and get a draw this way. So coming back after bishop to g5, we looked at the black king attacking the bishop on g6. So now what if he tries to march the other pawn, let's say pawn to c3. From here, white will start coming with the king to support the pawns, let's say c2. And now white is able to attack the pawn on f5. If the black king will guard it, the bishop will simply come to c1. And now black doesn't have any good moves. If the pawn on f4 marches, it's simply going to be taken by the king or the bishop. And the only other move that black has is moving the king to h5, from which white will take the pawn on f5. And now the bishop covering this diagonal uh, will be able to get a draw. And coming back from the very beginning, I do want to mention that if we shift this position two squares to the right where the bishop cannot cover that diagonal, black will be able to win. So let's take a look at that position. So in this position you could see that the bishop cannot cover the diagonal of both of the pawns as he's not able to go outside of the board. And this game is winning for black. Moving the king to try to attack the pawn since the king is not inside the square of the pawn is pointless because those pawns will simply just keep on marching and will promote eventually. So the best try that white has is to try to attack with the bishop and to cover both of the diagonals of the pawns. So something like bishop to d6. From here, what black will do is move the pawn to g4. And after bishop to f4, trying to cover both diagonals for, for both of the pawns, this is not going to help because after d3, white cannot prevent both of the pawns from marching. Something like king to e6 will be met with pawn to g3. And now the bishop here cannot take the pawn on g3 as the other pawn reaches the last dark square available and now the pawn will promote. So if white tries to move the bishop to e3, what's going to happen is that the pawn will march to g2. And now something like king to d5, pawn to d2. 
the bishop is dragged of taking that pawn otherwise it's going to promote on the next move and after he does that the other pawn will promote this way of advancing the pawns is named the pants method by Mike Boretsky and I think it's a really good term to use here as you can see how the pawns move a step at a time so now let's take a look at our last position this position might seem similar to the first position as the white king is in the square of the pawn on c4 and the bishop covers the diagonal of the other pawn but the position is totally different because the black king is next to the pawn that the white king is near instead of the pawn that the bishop covers here it's not enough for the bishop to just cover the diagonal for the pawn on h4 because after something like bishop to h3 here black can move the pawn to c3 and now after king b3 and king d3 even if the bishop checks the king on f5 the black king will move to d2 after something like bishop to e4 and pawn to h3 bishop to f5 pawn to h2 bishop to e4 covering the diagonal now the bishop is split and he's not going to be able to support both of the pawns after pawn to h1 promoting the bishop will have to take the queen and now black moves to c2 which is the only other light square that's available and he's going to promote on the next move so coming back from the very beginning the drawing move here is bishop to f5 this is the point of intersection that covers the diagonal of both of the separated pawns you could see it attacks the square h3 it also attacks the square c2 and now there's not much that black can do here there's a couple of tries that he has but none of them will be successful so the first try let's take a look at pawn to c3 if pawn moves to c3 white will bring the king to b3 and now black only has two tries if he moves the pawn to h3 the bishop can simply take it and now the black king will have to move to d3 to support the pawn on c3 to move because if that pawn just marches by itself the white king will simply take it so after king to d3 the bishop will come to f5 check and the king moves away and now white just has to stay on this diagonal as soon as the pawn will move to c2 the bishop will take it and coming back if instead of pawn to c3 black tries king to c3 not allowing white to come near the pawn on c4 after this the king will move to b5 attacking the pawn on c4 and now the black king cannot move to d3 as the bishop attacks that square so if he moves the king to b3 the bishop will come to e6 pinning the pawn on c4 if the pawn will move to h3 the bishop can take the pawn on c4 with check and then white will come with the bishop to d5 covering the diagonal for the pawn on the h file and if the king moves back to c3 the bishop will take the pawn on c4 after pawn to h3 the bishop will come to d5 and now he just has to stay on that diagonal to be able to take the pawn when it marches to h1 and coming back the last try that black has is moving the king to e5 attacking the bishop from which the bishop could simply come to h3 here if black comes next to the pawn to support from promoting the bishop will simply come back and after king to e5 again bishop to h3 if black is trying to push that pawn white can simply come near it and after black moves the king to d4 to defend the pawn white can simply come in front of the pawn and reach a draw this way there's nothing that black can do now to push the white king away and the bishop will just sacrifice for the pawn on the h file and the draw has been reached if you like my video please subscribe and don't forget to check out my new website masteryourchess.com where you can learn practice, test, and master your chess knowledge.